Good, Good evening, class. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Vicki Knuth, and I will be your moderator for this evening's lecture. And welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated in any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization. We are dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was founded as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in 1958. We hold classes throughout the United States and various foreign countries. Our Oceanside branch was established in 1994. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you the Dean of the School in Oceanside, Dr. Dennis Bopey, and the President, Dr. Carl Emler. Now, in this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title for the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name for our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title for the word or son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The true name of the Holy Spirit manifest in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5, that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title, which means that Elohim is a title our Creator has chosen for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name, a minor investigation on your part into a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages have any letters or characters in their alphabet that could produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in our own English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title like Lord and God. Now Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have this cloud drawn all around the edges of this chart to show you how everything on this chart abides within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, and that means having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. Now this form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane <coughs> as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should all ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? And a further understanding of this name and title can be had by reading the preface of a Holy Name Bible. Now also in the school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel up out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh later instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle. In this school, we show proof how everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function 
of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Our 10 primary constitutional aims or objectives are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Three is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Four is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern, both practical and occult science. Five is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Nine is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And ten is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of a mortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. Tonight we'll have a prayer by Bruce Geller. We'll have a scripture read by Jerry Geller, which will be Revelation, the second chapter. Good evening. Good evening. Let us all bow our hearts and minds in a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father Yahweh, we are grateful again for another opportunity that you have given us to come to a place where we can hear the true gospel of Yahshua the Messiah being preached. We want to thank you for sending Dr. Kinley into the world and bringing this great vision and revelation to us. We want to thank you for the many blessings that you've bestowed upon us. We ask you to help us concentrate, to keep this thing always straight, Keep it simple and straight. And just like the founder preached it, we ask you to help us keep this thing straight. Not have any personal aspirations to try, try to want to be somebody. Just be happy being a son of Yahweh and righteousness. We ask you to help us to focus in on you. And we ask you to help us to love one another with the same genuine, fervent love that you have loved us with. In Yahshua's holy name we ask this. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Good evening, class. Good evening. Tonight I'll be reading Revelations, the second chapter from the Holy Name Bible, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts and revised by the late A.B. Trainum of the Scripture Research Association in College Park, Maryland. Revelations 2. Unto the messenger of the assembly of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hath labored, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love, Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the assemblies." 
To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the garden of Yahweh. And unto the messenger of the assembly of Smyrna write, These things saith the first and last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know how thou art slandered by them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the, are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which shall suffer. Thou shalt suffer. Behold, the adversary shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation days. Be thou faithful unto death. unto the assemblies. He that overcometh shall not be heard of the second death. And to the messenger of the assembly in Pergamos write, These things saith he that hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. Thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the assemblies. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. And unto the messenger of the assembly at Thyatira write, these things say the Son of Yahweh, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and love, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the assembly shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts, and will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that ye, which ye have always already, hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father, and I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the assemblies. And our first speaker this evening will be uh, one of our visitors from Alba Albuquerque, New Mexico, Dr. Charles Sanchez. Surprise. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm very happy and glad to be back with you all. Um, as they say in the south, I guess. I'm from the southwest. <laughs> but I sure didn't expect to uh, get up on the floor. I was just here a couple months ago. And 
But I do have something to say about this great gospel that we have been blessed with. And uh, it, it's the greatest teaching that man could ever encounter. It, uh, it's unto eternal life. And um, it's, uh, it's always uh, a great thing to dwell together with the brethren. Because we, we see the same thing. You know, we see eternal life uh, uh, by our Father through His Son, Yahshua the Messiah. And um, I'm just going to be up here for a few minutes and um, just looking forward to spending a little bit of time with, with you all. And uh, we're on our way to uh, Los Angeles from here. We just left uh, Tucson, Arizona. I had class over there last night. and It was a really, really nice class. And they send her love. And, and the brethren from Albuquerque send her love. And uh, looking forward to seeing you all. In November, when we have our spiritual feast in Albuquerque, um, like I said before, this gospel was great, and I didn't know what the gospel was until I came into the school. Like many of us, also have that same testimony. I thought it was Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but the Holy Spirit is going to say uh, exactly the opposite of what we thought we knew, and the, the things that we were taught in Christianity. And for me, uh, most of my life uh, being a member of the Roman Catholic Church. And later on, I dib-dabbed into uh, uh, some of the different Christian churches, and uh, basically they were teaching the same things as the Roman Catholic Church was. And uh, that's why the, the Roman Catholic Church is referred to as the Mother Church. And those that uh, sprung off of her, uh, starting with uh, 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 Martin Luther mm -hmm. in, uh, I believe, the 16th century, 15-something, I guess that's the 16th century. Mm -hmm. uh, he was the first to protest. That's what where you get the word Protestant. And then after that, you had the Anglican Church of England, and it just goes on and on. And last count, I guess uh, I was told by different people that uh, there's over 30,000 different denominations of Christianity in the world alone. And they all uh, claim that they know the truth, they know the way, and it's through Jesus Christ. And uh, their Lord, God, the Father in heaven, as they say, uh, or something, something like that. And uh, uh, I come to find out that the Savior's name is not Jesus, never was Jesus, never will be Jesus. That uh, Lord and God are titles, and they're not names. And the name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and his divine title that he chose for himself is Elohim, not God. And Lord is a title, and Yahweh is definitely a name. It means all-powerful and self-existing. <clears throat> Elohim is his divine title, and his son's name is Yahshua, which means Yahweh is salvation. And, and those names are the, the names that uh, were first uh, given to Moses. Let's talk about the heavenly, our Heavenly Father's name. Yahweh was first given to Moses some, uh, uh, some uh, 2,500 years, I believe, after Adam was, and Eve were driven out of the garden. And nobody knew the name of Yahweh until it was time for our Creator to, to reveal His name to, to Moses. There's a certain time for things to take place. And even uh, Jacob, <coughs> whose name was changed to Israel, he, he asked to be given the name of, of, of the Creator. And he wrestled with an angel all night. And instead of getting the name of the Creator, his name was changed from Jacob to Israel. And out of Israel came the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, uh, the chosen people. The pe they were chosen for a, for a time. But um, let me have um, uh, Matthew 5, 17 and 18. And... Uh, Matthew 3 and 13 through verses 15 and 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. And I just want to lay a, a little bit of a foundation and then take my seat. Okay? And um, uh, we can never learn everything in this school because just as Yahweh is infinite, His, his knowledge that, uh, that He has, that, that He is, is infinite. And uh, Paul says that we're going to be learning in the ages to come. But that which we have been given is head over heels above what the world can even imagine that is possible for a, for a man to know. You know. Go ahead and get those scriptures, please. Matthew 5 and 17. 
Okay. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Now, if anybody has a red letter edition of, of the King James Bible, it, uh, anything that's, that's printed in red means that this is the Savior talking, right? And he is able to uh, read uh, the unexpressed thoughts of his creatures, and he's confronting the rulers of Israel. You know, and they're thinking that he had come into the world to destroy that which was given to their people, the old covenant, that, uh, some 1,500 years prior here from Mount Sinai, see? And so he's, uh, they're thinking that because of the things that he's doing when he enters, enters into his ministry. And he says, think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. Read. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. But to fulfill. And that's a word that I thought I knew going through, you know, elementary school, and, you know, and I didn't know what it meant. You know, fulfill means to stop, to complete, to bring to an end, to translate into reality. See, before, that law was a physical, cardinal, spiritual, temporary law, and now he came in the world to fulfill that and translate it to the spiritual essence or the reality of what this physical law pointed to, you see. And uh, see, they, 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 the rulers of Israel, were thinking that he came to do away with this, but not, he did come to do away with it, but, but not the way they were thinking, okay. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill, see, to translate it into reality. As the Messiah told the woman at the well, the true worshipers are not going to worship in this mountain, nor in Jerusalem, but the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Why? Because our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, is spirit and seeketh to be worshipped in spirit and in truth. You see? Now, uh, so that, in, 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 in a few words, is, the uh, I'll say, half of the mission of the Messiah was to co come and to fulfill basically 4,000 years of history. But in, in particular... Uh, and, and very important, he came to fulfill that which he gave on Mount Sinai. Yeah, it was Yahshua the Messiah, or Yahweh Elohim, who Yahweh is, that spoke down this law from Mount Sinai to some 12 tribes of the children of Israel. See, it was given to them and to them only. Gentiles were not invited to the party. There were no party crashers there, see. And when we found party crashers when I was a teenager... And we'd get them out, outside. And, and sometimes you'd be rolling in the dirt, you know, mm -hmm. trying to get rid of them, you know. No party crashers here. See, it, they said uh, in the book, it said that, that they that came out and they were delivered two and two through the divided waters of the Red Sea were of a mixed multitude. Not like you say, see in, in that Ten Commandment movie, you got Egyptians and all kinds of different uh, uh, nations of people coming out. See, mixed multitude, old men, young men, women, Children, you know, <coughs> lambs, yeah. you know, cattle. That's mixed, mixed multitude. See, it says in the law and the prophets that this law was given to Israel and Israel only. Okay, that's something that I didn't know. See, I thought that that Ten Commandment law, for example, was given for me to keep. Okay, an Hispanic uh, Jew? No, just, uh, <laughs> just a heathen. That's all I was. See, I couldn't keep it if I wanted to. You know, and they made me as a Catholic uh, memorize that stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I got you with another scripture, uh, Matthew 3, 13. I just want confirmation uh, that uh, Yahshua never changes his story. In fact, when he died on the cross, he said, it is finished, which right. means it's fulfilled. That's right. another definition of fulfilled, finished. Right. Is that right? Finished. Finished. <laughs> but, okay, now, see, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He, he doesn't change, and that gives you and me, that should give you and me stability, something to stand on. Because if he was a different every day, a wishy-washy creator, the way they see him out in the world, he don't have stability, so how can I have stability? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, he, he said it to a, a multitude of people in the fifth chapter of Matthew. He said it to the leaders of Israel where we just read. Now he's going to recite it to one man called John the Baptist, who later we would find out, is Elijah, but you would have to come back to find out that mystery, and that is a great mystery also in itself, okay? Uh, Matthew 3, 13, please. Then cometh Yahshua from Galilee to Jordan 
See, and we have, we have it pictorially illustrated a little bit on this chart here, see. Then cometh Joshua from Nazareth unto John. Now, why was he coming from Nazareth? Leaving his parents. See, he was fulfilling. See, after, after, after uh, the children of Israel left Egypt, see, they uh, went to and through the divided waters of the Red Sea, see, after partaking of the Passover is what I'm saying, and they were baptized in the cloud and in the sea, so saith the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. So in fulfillment, Yahshua come, coming from Nazareth after uh, 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 keeping the Passover to be baptized of John. See, so we're, we're filling in the blanks there, see, because everything that the Messiah was doing, every step he, he took, every breath he took was in fulfillment of something, something that was set up or instituted in the law and the prophets. Remember I said he's fulfilling 4,000 years of history. So he is the light of the world, and he is, he is, he is moving at the speed of light because he is the light. See, Now go ahead and read that. Then cometh Yahshua from Galilee to Jordan unto John mm -hmm. to be baptized of him. Okay. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? Now why does John ask him that question? Because if you read in the fifth verse of that chapter, this was a baptism of, of, of repentance. These were sinners, those Israelites. Again, own, no Gentiles were invited to this party. See, they had broken the law, and they had to repent and confess their sins to John. See, and when the Messiah comes, he is perfect. He's a, a, a perfect vessel that's going to die for our sins. He's without sin. So, so when he comes to him, to John, he, he says he's waiting for a confession, and John doesn't know who he is, even though he's his cousin. He didn't know that this is the Messiah. So when he doesn't uh, confess any sins, you know, repeat that last part again, because I can't quote that last verse. But John forbade him, saying, mm -hmm. I have need to be baptized of thee. You see, he, he's without sin, and John says, I need to be baptized yeah. of you, right. and you come thou to me, read. Read. And Yahshua answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. Now just let it happen, John. Just, just suffer it to be so now. Read. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. There's that word fulfill again. See, fulfill all righteousness. And at this point, he was fulfilling physical water baptism. Now if you read in Deuteronomy 6 and 24 and 25, Israel's righteousness was to keep the law as it was referred to, the law of Moses. Right. See, some 613 laws, ordinances, and judgments. And the Messiah's mission was to come and fulfill that and take that out of the way and usher in again the essence or the law of the spirit of life. Okay, now let me have uh, 1 Corinthians, what did I call 15 verses 1 through 4. Okay. 1 Corinthians 15, 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. See, now it's not gospels, it's gospel. Right. Right. See, see, I declare unto the gospel, see, that he received yeah. on the road of Damascus. Right. See, we can't deliver unto anybody anything unless we receive it. And it has to be in, embedded in our hearts or our minds or our soul mm -hmm. or our very essence of ourselves. See, right. see, read. I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, mm -hmm. which also ye have received. Now he's been down there to Corinth. He preached it, and they received it. Read. And wherein ye stand. Now they're standing in this gospel. Read. By which also ye are saved. See, this gospel has the power of salvation. And if anybody wants to change it, add to it, take away from it, they're messing with their eternal life. That's true. See, read. By which you are saved, if you keep in memory. Now, that's a huge word. Yep. If mm. you keep in memory. Yep. And Dr. Allen taught us on way back when, institute or fulfill. See, because Jesus' character that they had taught me is a totally different character from that which I come to find out that is, is the truth that I find in the scriptures. See, yeah. see, because they say that Jesus Christ came in to institute a Christian way of life for you and I to follow. The Messiah, we read in three different places now, and we can read in many, many, many more, and also in the Law and the Prophets, that his mission was to 
do away or fulfill. Institute and fulfill. One is to start, right. one is to end. Right. You see, there, there it is. Again, the adversary's job is to, to, to oppose the truth or oppose Yahshua. He is the truth. Oppose Yahweh. He is the truth also. Okay, now that's his job. Okay, now continue to read. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you. So important that we keep in memory what I, we have been preached unto us. See, uh, and we got it because of a divine vision and revelation that was given to our founder, Dr. Henry Kip Clifford Kinney. But he said that he was dumber than the, than the dumb of dumbers, or something like that, <laughs> the dumbest. <laughs> see, and he wouldn't have known anything about Yahweh's purpose unless Yahweh would have shown it to him, see. And we ha it has to be revealed to us too. We get it in piecemeal, and he got it at once. See, right. he first he got the vision, then he got the revelation of the vision that he received. Right. You see, and you want to have that same vision? Come to class. Here it is. Yeah. You see, we get it in piecemeal. Continue to read. Unless ye have believed in vain. See, vain doesn't mean, oh, God, gab nab it. You know, that, that's not what it means. Mm -hmm. It means of none effect, of no use, empty. Right. That's what the vain means, see. That's and, and, and people say, and they taught me, oh, that you can't take the name of God in vain. And God wasn't a name. Right. See, and God came from the German word God, and Lord came from the English, uh, uh, from the English people, Lord, you see. Right. And Jesus uh, came from Le, Zeus. Le comes from the Babylonian God, see, and Zeus is a sky god, come from the Greeks. So you got an English, German, you know, uh, and then Christ is what, Hindu and Greek? You know, so you got a Hindu, I mean, it's a mess, you know. See, but, but this Yahweh is a heavenly name. This Yahshua is a heavenly name. And as I said before, this Elohim is the divine title that Yahweh chose for himself for his creatures. That's us, right. you see. And, you know, this is English. And where's the Hebrew? Or it's somewhere, the Tetragrammaton, yeah, you know. Right. But, you know, if I was a Chinaman, I would, I, I would be able to write in Chinese and, and uh, um, uh, th there would be characters assigned in the Chinese language so that when I, with, when I read it, I don't know if they read from left to right, like we do in English, or they read from right to left, as the Hebrew people do. But when a China man reads it, they're going to say, Yahweh, right. see? And Yahshua, see? Shua is a slider. It just comes out just naturally, just like our Heavenly Father's name, Yahweh. He put it in every breath that we take. You see? Now, see, the gospel is predicated, and it's talking about one, Yahshua the Messiah. See, this is the definition of the gospel, and it's also in other places. And the Messiah, when he was walking the Judean hills, see, starting, and uh, when he started his ministry, starting here at the River Jordan, where we just read there in Matthew, the third chapter, you see, uh, he, he was, was uh, uh, declaring the, the will of the See, that gospel, and he was preaching his own gospel. He, and what's the gospel? See, now, it has to, we can't, we have to keep it in memory, and it can't be in vain. Okay? And we got that far. So we're going to pick it up and read some more. See, I said I wasn't going to be up here for a long, long time, so I'm so tired. So go ahead and read. Uh, and, yeah. Wherever least, you think. Do you want me to just, just continue on? For, yeah. I de for I delivered unto you, first of all, right. that which I also received. Right, right. How that the Messiah died for our sins, according to the scriptures. Now, Andrea, I gave you a yellow pamphlet. Could you read the definition of how, do you see? Because we're talking about a name, okay? Now, the gospel is about how, what? Read that again, Linda. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, mm -hmm. how that Yahshua died for our sins. How, not just that he died the way I see, but how Yahshua died for our sins, read. According to the scriptures. Oh, according to the scriptures, the law and the prophets, the writings of Moses and the writings down from Joshua. That he died according to the scriptures, how he died according to the mm -hmm. scriptures, read. And that he was buried. And that he was buried. That he rose again the third day. He rose again the third day. According to the scriptures. According to the scriptures. See, read. And that he was seen of Cephas and then of the twelve. And then it was, it was confirmed that he was seen after he resurrected by around 500. See, they, they saw him in a vision resurrect. Now, 
remember, we're talking about the gospel is about this one character that we know his, the name of salvation is Yahshua. See, because there's some that's, that told me, Christians, they told me, oh, the way you pronounce his name is not important, right. you know, but it's the character. Now, we've all heard that, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I just said one character is Jesus, and what they uh, told me and taught me for 28 years was that he did this and he did that. When I come to find out in the scriptures, I come to find out that everything that's in the book is the exact opposite of what I, what I was taught. Mm -hmm. See, about this other character, Yahshua the Messiah, you see? So how? Now, can you give me the definition of how it's in there, Andrea? In what manner or way? Not just that he was di died, buried, and resurrected, but that how, one of the defini definitions is by what manner or by what way. You got some, uh, some answers there also? Go ahead and read those. By the cross. By the cross, read. To what degree, extent, or amount. Now, these are all definitions of that one little H-O-W. Read. Mm -hmm. And the answer is death. By his death. Because many said that he didn't die, and, 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 and the Jehovah Witnesses said that he was impaled on a stake, right. you know, not on a cross, see? And that others say different things, see? But it, it's laid down in the law and the prophets, see? Read. In what state or condition mm -hmm. Yahshua came in the likeness of sinful flesh. Looking just like you and me, but yet without sin, read. Or in the form of a man. Mm -hmm. For what reason or purpose? I didn't know for what reason or purpose, read. To take away sin. See, there, there's the other half of his mission, to fulfill the law and the prophets in 4,000 years of history and to take away sins. And Christianity tells me that I can have the Holy Spirit and continue to sin. Now, isn't that the exact opposite? Yes, that is, is a lie. Yes, is. Either Yahshua has the power to take away the sins right. of, of mankind or he doesn't. Right. He, he could cause the sun to rise, see, and have, keep all this universe in perfect harmony. The birds to fly south, what, in, in the winter? Yeah. Okay, and, and everything else that takes place in nature, as it's called, see, but, in, but really in his creation. Mm -hmm. And he can't handle a little me or you. Yes, he can. Yeah. He came away to take away. He came in the world to take away the sins of the world. These are all definitions of the word how. Mm -hmm. Some more there, right, Andrea? Yep. Okay. Um, at what price or for what sum? Right. His life. His life. That through him the world might be saved. But see, that's all by the word of how. And what else you got there? To what effect, with what meaning, mm -hmm. to bring about a change in a man's heart and mind. There in order must to be a change in, in order to inherit what? Eternal life. Eternal life. And what else? By what name or designation? By what name or designation? Zeus, Jesus. Nope. You see, because that's what they say in Latin, Zeus, Jesus. In Spanish, I'm Hispanic, we say Jesus. Mm -hmm. Sounds like Zeus, don't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's where Jesus came from, you right. see? And you can see the similarity. Yeah, Jesus came in his father's name, Zeus, the sky god, see? Yeah, he, see, but Yahshua came in the name of the father, Yahweh. His name is Yahshua. Yahweh is salvation. Mm -hmm. Now, let me have, I'm going to take, uh, take my seat. Let me have 2 Corinthians 5 and 19. And uh, there is over 6,800 places in the writings of Moses and the prophets or the so-called Old Testament of the Bible where Yahweh puts emphasis on his name. And they say, oh, a name's not important. It might not be important to you and me. See, it is to me now yes. or, or to mankind, but to our Heavenly Father it is. Yes, it see, is. our Savior, see, they, they put on that cross, I-N-R-I. See, there was no J. There's still no J in the, word, in, in the language, uh, the Hebrew language, the Greek language. They say that the New Testament was written in Greek, right? Mm -hmm. No letter J, see? Nor in the Latin language, see? That's where French comes from, Portuguese, mm -hmm. Spanish, Italian. Italian, yeah. See, that's the, the so-called mother language, and it's also referred to as the dead language. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Roman Catholics uh, 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 give the mass in. In the, in the Vatican, you see. But Yahshua of Nazareth, see, the, the J come from the I, and the I come from the Y, see, and, and so it's Yahshua of Nazareth, that's the N, R or Rexus, which means king of the Jews. See, no, no I, right. no J, it should be Yahshua, it should be Y-N, 
all right, I'll just say it like that, you know, for simplicity. Yahshua, Nazareth, king of the Jews. Where's the J at? See, I was a Roman Catholic. I never saw that. See, how simple. And it was under our nose all our lives, but yet it had to be revealed to us. We had to come and sit down on these hard seats and say, this is the way it is. Someone had to show it to us and prove it to us. Paul says, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. He also writes that faith, because you've got to have faith, brother, is what? It's evidence. It's substance. See, Hebrews 11 and 1. See, it's not just what some, some man is saying, see, or what ma some man conjured up, but what thus saith Yahweh through the writings of Moses and the prophets. Isaiah 8 and 20 says, to the, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them, no illumination or no life. Light and life are synonymous. Mm -hmm. See, so we want to have life, so we must go the way that Yahweh has said it. It wasn't Isaiah that said it. It wasn't Dr. Kinley, our founder, who said it. See, it was the Holy Spirit speaking this through Isaiah, speaking it through uh, Dr. Kinley, see. And if we say that Dr. Kinley was Yahweh in a body, just like you and I are, See, what else could we be? See, everything is spirit materialized, see? But if we say that Dr. Kinley was Yahweh in a body, we should be going according to what thus saith Yahshua through that vessel. You see what I'm saying? So I got you with 2 Corinthians 5 and 19. Read and I'll pick my seat. Uh, I'm going to start at 18. Okay. 2 Corinthians 5, 18. Okay. And all things are of Yahweh. All things are of Yahweh. Who hath reconciled us to himself. Oh, he, is, he, he did it by his son, Yahshua the Messiah. See, we, the man was driven out of, from the garden, see, and a, away from the presence of Yahweh, see. And see, there has to be a way for mankind to be reconciled back to the Father. And because by one man, Adam, all are dead. And by one man, Yahshua, all are made alive. We have been reconciled, people, you see, back to the Father by his death. The creator of heaven and earth, of all things, died for you and me. That's mind-blowing. Yes. And to think that he thought of your name back here before he even created a creation, that's mind-blowing every time I even think about it, okay? See, I'm glad you got the 18th verse there, young lady. <laughs> Continue to read. Who hath reconciled us to himself mm -hmm. by Yahshua the Messiah right. and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. See, this is a ministry of reconciliation, read. To wit, that Yahweh was in the Messiah. To wit, Yahweh was in the Messiah. Reconciling the world unto himself. Reconciling the world back unto himself. See? Yep. And that's it. Yeah. No, imp Not imputing their trespasses unto them. Mm -hmm. And hath committed <laughs> unto us the word of reconciliation. See, because he died for our sins, wiping the slate clean. And see, once he has, uh, has died... And you receive his and, and believe that his blood was shed for your sins and for my sins. Now that gospel reconciliation, you have been reconciled back unto the Father by that blood. Okay, and it's all about uh, believing. See, and, and first of all, believing in the name of our Savior Yahshua the Messiah, and all that that great name represents. The exact opposite of what the, those pagan gods, and that's what that's what Christianity is. It's paganism, see, mixed with the Bible and given to you and me and said and presented to us as truth, mm -hmm. see. And a half a lie is, is just a lie, yep, right. see. And, but it's, it's all lies, you see. I hope and trust that somebody might have got something out of the things that, uh, that, were, that I talked about. And uh, uh, you guys need to come to Albuquerque, okay? Because <laughs> I've already been here in the last eight <laughs> weeks. <laughs> But it's always a pleasure to see you guys and um, keep fighting the faith. Yep. See, keep, keep fighting the fight of faith and, and uh, stay focused as a prayer. To deliver us from a state that we did not know we were in until we came down to the school. Yeah. That we were dead mm -hmm. and we did not know our grave. The religious leaders in the world, they have promoted uh, a false doctrine to mankind and all them, they, and they don't know they can't present it to you the truth. But what has happened to us is that a man that walked the airplane among us and he had a testimony that he gave. 
he was assistant pastor in the Church of God. And he was put out of church. And he wondered about this creator that he, he, he I said he was assistant pastor, so I mean, he, he ministered. Mm -hmm. But now he had a question on his mind. He wanted to know how was this great creator going to judge the world in righteousness? How was he going to do that? When the Catholics said they're right, the Baptists said they're right, mm -hmm. the Buddhists said they're right, you got all these different religions claiming that they're right, how was he going to do that? So he was seeking to know the creator as he really is and as he actually exists. So in 1931, the creator revealed himself to him and showed him in a vision. And he said, as he seen the vision, he didn't understand it. Shortly after that, he received a revelation of that. And then he understood what it was. Now, prior to the vision, he was a walking Bible. But after he had the vision, he, he had to go back into the Bible again. He thought it, was, he thought it, was, it changed on it. But he read the same, read the same way. But what had happened, something had transformed his mind to let him see it and understand what the scriptures really said. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he came and delivered that to us. Mm -hmm. He showed what we didn't have. Now, this founder of this school, He said many, many things. But he challenged us to make him prove to us that he did have a vision of revelation. We didn't know what kind of question to ask him. So he asked the question and answered it for us, and then we began to understand how to ask the question, how to, and then he told us how to, he gave us an answer to it. In that kind of an environment, we come to know this man had to have a vision of revelation. The things he taught us, it proved that there was Yahweh in a box. Mm -hmm. Now he said, it's no big thing. You're the same thing I am. Why? Because we all came from the same order. We had the same order. Now, this uh, Joshua, this, this Dr. Kim, I'm going to talk about this in a few minutes. Because I want you to see that nothing that he said disagreed with what the scripture said. The scriptures confirm the things he taught. Mm -hmm. They verify. He couldn't say no more like the Messiah. He couldn't. To know him. Mm -hmm. He's invisible. How you gonna know something that's invisible? There had to be a way for that to happen. And he brought to us and showed us that salvation was in the name of Joshua the Messiah, right. not Jesus Christ right. and not Dr. Kennedy. Mm -hmm. That's right. Dr. Kennedy himself, he said, A.C. Kenny is my earthly name. Mm -hmm. That's not my name. Mm -hmm. Well, what is your name then? See? Your name is Yah 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 Yashua. Now, let's see some here. Now, I had a revelation for you, second chapter of this. <coughs> and this is John on the Isle of Patmos. He's having a vision. And he was shown in this vision, and he was copied into heaven and reported to us what he saw in heaven. And he came and revealed it down to, uh, in the scriptures, as you have written in your, in your Bible. But this, this here, go get me the uh, two, uh, sec, uh, Re uh, Revelations 2, and start with the 16th verse. Revelations 2 and 16. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, repent, or else I come unto you quickly. And will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. And I will fight against them with the sword of his mouth. Now, if, to understand this, we have to really understand how 
John saw it first. John on the Isle of Patmos. His life was preserved to be on the Isle of Patmos for a witness to what Moses and the prophets wrote. And thereby what he saw in the vision and in the revelation, he delivered as it was told to him in the vision to write it and send it to the seven assemblies which are in, in, in Asia. Mm -hmm. But he's looked at it, when you read how he appeared to him, then you get a better understanding why he's saying what he's saying here. Go back and give me uh, Revelation 1 and 12. Uh, go back to go back to the uh, go back to nine. Revelations one nine. Mm -hmm. I John, who also am your brother. I John, who also am your brother. And companion in tribulation. And this John is the, is the disciple John. Mm -hmm. See, so read. And companion in tribulation. And companion in tribulation. And in the kingdom of patience of Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. In the kingdom of with, patience of Yahshua the Messiah. Was in the isle that is called Patmos. He said he was in the isle that is called Patmos. An island is a land surrounded by water. That's right. He's out there to verify what Moses said he saw. He said, Moses said in the beginning of his vision, he said he saw the spirit of Yahweh moved upon the face of deep, and the, the deep was covering the earth plain. Mm -hmm. So the earth was inundated with water. Now you got John on the Isle of Patmos on a piece of land surrounded by water. This is nothing but a mountain protruding out of the sea, right. which is also what Moses, he's up here on a mountain. We had the vision he had. Mm -hmm. See? Okay, read on. For the word of Yahweh and for the testimony. Now he's out there for the, the word of Yahweh and for the testimony, what? Of Yahshua the Messiah. Of Yahshua the Messiah. Right. Mm -hmm. So his testimony is talking about Yahweh and Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. See? Read. I was in the spirit. He said, now I was in the spirit. Um, on the Lord's day. On Yahweh's day. Right. And heard behind me a great voice oh, as oh, oh. of a trumpet. As a voice of a trumpet, really. Si uh, did I read it wrong? No, no, no. no oh, no, <laughs> sorry. No, I, I something was on my mind and I can't get into it now. Okay. <laughs> Saying, I am Alpha and Omega. I am Alpha. In other words, I'm beginning yeah. and I'm the end. I'm Alpha and Omega. Read. The first and the last. I'm the first and the last. So that means the whole story is wrapped about him right. in the beginning and him in the end. That's right. Okay, read. And what thou seest. Now he said, now what thou seest. Write in a book. Write in a book. And send it unto the seven churches. And then he says, send it to the seven churches or the seven assemblies which were in Asia. Mm -hmm. Read. Unto and, and look, folks. Unto Ephesus. Yahweh didn't tell me saying to, to Rome to get an epimotic. No. No, he didn't. That's good. He said, send it to, to the seven cities which are in Asia. Mm -hmm. Read. And unto Smyr uh, Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, mm -hmm. and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that Now, he said he had to turn to see the voice that spoke with him. Right? Being turned what? And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Being turned, so I saw seven golden candlesticks. Now, folks, what we wanted you to see real plain is this. What the founder delivered unto us was that he saw in a vision mm -hmm. how the Yahweh had told Moses back here to have him to have Israel make a tabernacle. This tabernacle was a pattern. Mm -hmm. And we had to look at that pattern to be able to understand it. And that pattern was a, uh, this pattern was a figure or a type of the body of Yahshua Messiah. I'm going to talk about that a little later on, but I want you to see that right now. And he said, uh, so to make it and build it. And this tabernacle, it had in it a lampstand. See? And they burned they burn, uh, burn the, uh, the lampstand from, from 3 o'clock in the afternoon to 9 o'clock in the morning. But this lampstand, John said he saw him walk in the midst of seven golden cancer. He's walking down to the edge of the dispensation. Read. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks. One like unto the Son of Man. One like unto the Son of Man. Read. Clothed with a garment down to the foot, mm -hmm. and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Read. And his head 
and his hairs were white like wool, right. as white as snow, mm -hmm. and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Right, read. And his feet like unto fine brass. His feet like unto fine. Now what he's doing is still, he's describing the man that he saw in the vision as this tabernacle. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is the tabernacle that's being exposed. But this is identified. Now, we're saying that he was on uh, the founder wanted to know how was he going to judge the world in right, righteousness. So he had to had to present him some kind of evidence or some kind of proof the way Yahweh is going to judge a man in right or wrong. Mm -hmm. So he had a pattern. This pattern is something to go by. Yeah. See, and then we want to look at that later on too. Now, this founder has got to a point where people be begin to believe more in him than the message he delivered to us. Mm -hmm. Now I want to try to clear some things up about that. Because we want you to see that it's not about the founder, H.C. Kennedy. Mm -hmm. See? He said, I'm not your savior. Mm -hmm. See? He also said that H.C. Kennedy is not my name. Now skip down to the 17th verse for me, please. And when I saw him. When I saw him, the man that he saw, he had a sword that went out of his mouth, a flaming sword that went out of his mouth, to his sword. When I saw him, what? I fell at his feet he as fell dead. At, he fell at his feet as dead man. Read. And he laid his right hand upon me, mm -hmm. saying unto me, Fear not. Fear not. I am the first and the last. I am the first and the last. Read. I am he that liveth. I am he that liveth. And... I, I, and, and, he, and I was dead, dead Thank you, my, my but I'm alive forevermore. So he's talking about this one, Yahshua Shai, he died, he was buried and raised from the dead, never to die again. Right. Mm -hmm. And that means that's what the emphasis becomes upon that. Mm -hmm. So now what I'm trying to show you that this man, Yahshua, coming in the world, he's come in to fulfill what's in the law and the prophets. He's got to go that way. You had to go the way it's written of him. Mm -hmm. See? And by that being so, then you have, have to see that everything he's doing was in fulfillment of the scripture. Mm -hmm. See? Now, this, this name, see? His name, Yahshua, means Yahweh is salvation. That means Yahweh was in that body, yeah. delivering or delivering mankind from death into life. Now, when you go back and you see how Yahweh delivered Israel, he had the, the power to deliver Israel out of Egypt. Then that would mean he had to, and this, if Yahweh had the power to deliver Israel out of Egypt, then he had the power to deliver Mankind, if you believe it, if you believe it. This back here is a type. Mm -hmm. See? So now I'm trying to establish to you is that he was on a mission to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, here, here's what I want you to see now, real closely now. If his name, well, I'm trying to put, I'm going to share it this way. What you have on, here, on this chart here, it says Henry Shepherd Kennedy. He had the vision and revelation. What you have on these charts are illustrations of that vision and revelation. Yes. And if you take time to be able to study for a while, you'll be able to come to the same vision and revelation that he had. Because Yahweh, because he was, he was desired. Now this is, I'm talking about the founder of this school. We had set up a number of schools. While he was alive, he set up a number of schools. And at that time, primarily, they all taught basically the same thing. Right. He was proud of that. Mm -hmm. He said the reason why they all taught the same thing because they were all looking at the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now, something has happened over the years. They turned their eye away from the things he told us to do. Right. Right. See? Now, a lot of times what happened with, with people, they look at the man and not look at what was in the man. Right. And that's where the big problem is. So now what, we're, what I'm trying to get down to, I'm trying to show you about the man 
the difference between the man and what was in the man. Right. See, that's where the problem is at. Mm-hmm. See? Now, what, we are, what I'm saying to you, just make it real plain and real simple about this. I, well, let me, let me get some book on this. Maybe better to take some book on this. <laughs> I, won't be out there, I won't be out there by myself there. <laughs> See? Uh, I think Paul wrote there in uh, 1 Timothy uh, 2.15, 2, 2, uh, uh, Yahweh was in Yahshua, uh, no, not that the one. Uh, uh, Prophecy oh came not in all time. Uh, read two, two, uh, second, 1 Timothy 2.15. 1 Timothy 2.15. Not with stupid wine and wine. Timothy 2.15. Notwithstanding, she shall be no, seen. No, no, no. I got it. It's, uh, it's uh, second. Did I say Timothy? Yep. Yes. Yeah, Timothy. First, you call First Peter. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I want, I want where he's saying, I don't know what I got. Uh, Let's see. Yahweh was in, Yahshua said, no, that's in, that's in, uh, that's in Timothy there, but in Yahweh Timothy. was in. But I want where he says, the greatest of mystery, Yahweh, Yahweh. Yeah, that's 1 Timothy 3.16. Mm-hmm. 1 Timothy 3.16. Yeah. Now he said, now this is Paul writing about this. To read now. I want to learn from the book. Mm-hmm. First Timothy three sixteen. First Timothy three sixteen. Mm-hmm. Read. And without controversy. Without controversy. Great is the mystery of holiness. Great is the mystery of holiness. Yahweh was manifest what? in the flesh. Wait, 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 wait. Repeat that again now. And without controversy, great is the mystery of holiness. Great is the mystery of holiness. Mm-hmm. Why? Read. Yahweh was manifested. Yahweh, I've been talking about Yahweh was manifested in a body. Yeah. See? Yahweh was manifested in a body. Read. Justified in the spirit. Justified in the spirit. Seen of angels. Seen of angels. Preached unto the Gentiles. Preached unto the Gentiles. Believed on in the world. Believed on in the world. Received up in the glory. And received up in the glory. So now that, that was Yahweh in the Bible talking about that walks around in Joshua's side. Mm-hmm. Now, what makes him so different than anybody else? Right. See, he came in the likeness of simple faith. He was not simple faith. He came in the likeness of simple faith. Well, how are you going to get him being different from everybody else? See? As the first speaker was talking about that, he said that to the law and to the testimony, if they speak out of this way, because there's no light in them. Mm-hmm. So the scripture there for there for telling what's going to have to come, what he, he's going to have to do when he comes. Right. Now, what you do, you take what's prophesied and see if they meet the requirement of whoever you think is the Savior. Mm-hmm. If you don't meet the requirements, you can't use it. Now, what I'm trying to get at is this, see? Let me, let's, do, let's do a quick, quick check on that. Give me a, this is going to be real, real quick. Give me a Isaiah 7, 14. Give me a Isaiah 7, 14. Isaiah 7, 14. Let's try Malachi, uh, Micah, 5 and 1, 5 and 2. Okay. Isaiah 7, 14. Now, this is a prophet, and he's writing about something, something getting ready to happen. Read. Therefore, Yahweh himself. Therefore, Yahweh himself. Now, this is Yahweh doing this, not mankind. Okay. Yahweh himself. Shall give you a sign. Going to give you a sign. or going to give mankind a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. He's declaring a virgin is going to conceive. And bear a son. And bear a son. And shall call his name Emmanuel. And shall call his name Emmanuel. Now that's prophecy now. Mm-hmm. When I look at, we declare that this Henry Clifford Kennedy was the one that brought us this teaching. He had a brother that was three years older than him. Which means that he could not have been a virgin, been born a virgin. Mm-hmm. Right. That disqualified mm-hmm. from being what the scripture is talking about. Right. Yeah. Micah, Micah 5 and 2. Micah 5 and 2. 
But thou Bethlehem. But thou Bethlehem. Ephrathah. Ephrathah. Though thou be a little among the though you be a little among the nations, read. Yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me. Out of thee shall he come forth out. So Yahweh is prophesying to Micah mm -hmm. that you're going to have somebody come out of this little small little city mm -hmm. that's going to come out that he's given a stamp of approval on. Yep. Read. That is to be the ruler in Israel. That is to be the ruler in Israel. Whose going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Where was he from? from? <laughs> From everlasting. No, no, we're, I want to get something else about it. Where, where was, where was, where was uh, coming from? Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Oh. Coming from Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. So we got a child that's supposed to be born of a virgin, and he got to be born in Bethlehem. Right. So now we got to find somebody that would meet those two requirements at least first. Yep. That narrows, I'm talking about narrowing down who we should look for as our Savior. Yep. Right. Right. And we don't have nobody before him, we don't have nobody after him nope. that would meet those requirements. And as we start examining the scripture and find out what the scriptures say about him, then we should then be able to narrow down who then is the Savior. Now, if we, if we do it wisely and do it correctly, you're going to find out somebody's going to be eliminated. Mm -hmm. yep. I'm, I'm trying to use the scriptures to show that there's only but one. That's right. See? Now, I've got to do, do it, add some more to that. Let's have a, uh, go back to Revelations again, the fifth chapter. Now, the reason why I go to Revelation because that means reveal. Mm -hmm. This is where the whole thing is revealed. Mm -hmm. See? Revelation. Now, Revelation, you have here where John is looking at this. And he's, a, he's, a write, he's a writer. And he's not, he's not allowed to write it, but what he saw. He can't add to it. He can't take away from it. That's right. See? Now here in the fifth chapter of Revelation, what did he say there? Starting at one. Well, starting at one, yeah. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne. He said he saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne. A book written within. He said a book written within. And on the back side. And on the back side. Sealed with seven seals. He had seven seals on it. <coughs> Read. And I saw a strong angel. Then he said he saw a strong angel. Proclaiming he's with, proclaiming or he's yelling with a loud voice with a loud voice who is worthy who is worthy to open the book who is able to open the book and to loose the seals there and to loose the seals there on that's the question mm -hmm. my question is you're strong and you open it yeah <laughs> <That's right. laughs> read and no man in heaven. Now he went on to say, now you remember he's in heaven, he's having a vision in heaven. He looked in heaven and see no man in heaven. Nor in earth. Then he looked in the earth and didn't see no man in the earth. Neither under the earth. Or no man under the earth, one that died and gone to the grave. Was able to open the book. Was able to open the book and lose the seal. Neither to look thereupon. The founder of the school said, he didn't overlook you and me. So we're talking about, now that means that the able one is going to meet this requirement. Read on, find out who he's talking about. And I wept much. Said he wept much. He wanted to know about this real bad. <laughs> who is this? They can open that book and lose the seal. Read. Because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, uh -huh. neither to look thereon. Neither look thereon. Read. And one of the elders saith unto me, weep one not. One of the elders said unto me, weep not. Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe now of Judah. Going, now he's getting ready to pin for the one who's going to do it. That's right. The lion of the tribe of Judah. Of Judah. The well, that David. means it had to be of the lineage of the Hebrews. So they have a tribe called Judah. Right. Yeah. And you got to come out of that lineage, come out of that tribe to be the one. That's right. You see how we're trying? I'm trying to narrow it down. Mm -hmm. to, it can't just be anybody. Mm -hmm. See? Lion of the tribe of Judah. He shall be able to open the book and loose the seal. And he stands forth and he open, starts opening the book. We're going to six chapter. I don't have time to go into it now. But you see there that what's happening with you, you see that he's talking about this one in Joshua's side because he's born out of the tribe of Judah. And Judah was this tribe that sat in the, in the east there of the, of the gate of the tabernacle. Now, that means that this Joshua had to come out of the tribe of Judah. 
And he had to go forth and, and do what his mission, to, to accomplish the mission he was put on here, put down on the airplane for, he got to go that way. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm saying all that to show you that this Joshua sign is the one that we're talking about. Yeah. And I'm trying to narrow it down so we make sure we know he's the right one. Uh, give me uh, Romans. No, I don't want Romans. Hebrews. 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 Hebrews 10. And pick it up at the uh, 25th verse. See, what I'm trying to do, I'm just trying to show you. There's, there's only one that meets the criteria. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's the one that you and I have to accept. That's right. And you can't accept it but by a certain way. Right. Yahweh chose the way that that had to be done. Yes. Not the way I like for it to be done. See, it's been my way of doing it. See, the people are going to be saying, let's give them a pill. <laughs> <laughs> be done with it. That's all. <laughs> but it ain't the way Yahweh wanted to do it. No. See, we're going to read about that too. But I, I'm trying to show you that. We are trying to get down, narrow it down to who is the savior of the world. Mm -hmm. Yes. We eliminated you and me, and we eliminated those in heaven, we eliminated those in the earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got down to one, that's the lamb see, of the tribe of Judah. Yeah, that's right. See? And I'm trying to find out so we make sure we got the right one. And that means you can't have, once this man comes on the scene that meets this requirement, you can't have somebody coming on later on being on the other side. You can't go back in the scripture, go back before that and try to find somebody greater before he came in the world. So you only got to you zone in on one that can make this requirement. Right. See? Okay, now. This is what uh, Paul writes to the Hebrews. Hebrews 10.25. Hebrews 10.25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Now, let's don't for, forget to assemble ourselves, assemble ourselves together. Why? See? As the manner of some is. As the manner of some is. But exhorting one another. See, we want to, we want to come together. We should be coming together as often as we can. See, exhorting one another, encouraging one That's another, right. that they might believe the truth. Yes. Read. And so much the more. So much the more. As you see the day approaching. As you see the day approaching. So this is not the time to say, well, I, have, I, I don't know, I, I can receive, I come down to school, I don't know all I need, so I don't need to come back here anymore. I got, I got it made. <laughs> See? So somebody come up and give you something that you think, well, oh, that's pretty good. And then you get carried away on that, and you, you're going to miss the boat. Right. See? But watch what happens now. Read on. For if we sin willfully. Now he said, now if we sin willfully. What? After that which we have received. After, After that, that which we have received, the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth. Now, I slow that down. We want to make sure we got to understand. What I'm saying to you is that this man that came before us as Henry Clifford Kennedy, he came and presented to us the true gospel of the king. Mm -hmm. See? Now, if we receive that, then we turn around and sin woefully, what happened? Read. There remaineth there no remains, more sacrifice. There's no for more sins. sacrifice for sin. Why is there no more sacrifice for sin? Because that's the only one he had. Yeah, that's right. That's the only yeah. one he had. Right. So that's the only one he had when he gave and he offered him up down here. Mm -hmm. Can't get nobody. See? You had nobody before him. See? Adam didn't qualify. Mm -hmm. He wasn't born. He was he wasn't born in Bethlehem. He was born of a virgin, but he wasn't born of Bethlehem. That's just part about it. See? He wasn't born of a tribe of Judah. <laughs> See? I'm trying to show you how to narrow this thing down. Mm -hmm. See? So we're saying that this here, there's no other sacrifice to be offered up. Right. So you've got to accept whatever he did, you've got to accept what he did if you're going to be saved. Right. Are you all with me on that now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See? Now, there's no other sacrifice. Right. So since there's no other sacrifice, that means we got to zone in to this one here. That's right. See? Now, when he comes in the, in the world, see? Oh, 
Oh, people try to come up with all kinds of things. They want to try to yeah. jump around, get around, mess around, mess things up and everything. Mm -hmm. But if you take the book and look at, look at it correctly, see? Yeah. Uh, do you mind going to Matthew, the fourth chapter? Matthew, fourth chapter. Should we read? Four and one? Mm-hmm. Then Yahshua led up the spirit. Then Yahshua led, led up, the spirit. up of the spirit. What happened before this time? Right. See, we I'm, we, I'm, we can we, we try, we're talking about this man. We're talking about Yahshua Messiah as being the savior. We got to find out as much as we can about it. He had just been baptized with John the Baptist. He had gone out in the wilderness. See, we just we said then. Well, that's what you're reading there now. You read. Repeat again. Yash, then was Yahshua led up of the Spirit. He was led of the Spirit. So that means he's being guided by the Spirit of Yahweh to go where? Into the wilderness. To go into the wilderness. Why are you doing that, Messiah? To be tempted of the devil. Why are you doing that, Messiah? Somewhere you've got to find, remember the previous three talking about him, he's fulfilling. Right. What's he fulfilling? See? We go back here and you find that this Yahweh sent Moses down the land of Egypt to deliver the children of Israel out of bondage. And when Yahweh told Moses to tell Pharaoh, say, uh, let, let my son Israel go. Right. So this Israel is a type of his son in type. So when he brings him up out of the land of Egypt, then you see the Messiah, he's got to come out of the land of Egypt at some time. See, I'm just talking about how he's got to come that way. Mm -hmm. See, I'm trying to follow this, this what, he's, what he's doing. So now, they, the Israelites, his son Israel, they came to the Red Sea and were baptized in the crowd in the sea and came up, and they went into the desert. True. So here's the Messiah, that spirit. Now, when they when the Israel came up out of the land of Egypt, they were coming out there on their own. They were going oh. about their own, you know. They following were, the cloud. They were following the cloud. Yes, well, that means the cloud symbolized spirit, so they were following the spirit when they came out of the land right. of Egypt. So when the Messiah comes, he's got to come the same way. He's got to come, call it, call it, be led by the Spirit. Right. See? Be ordered by the Spirit. And look, folks, he was not carrying around with him a book. Mm -hmm. See, I must go to do this today. Yeah. And maybe I got to do that today. No, he was not. See? I got news for you. He was the one who told the boys what to write. Yep. Right. See? And by him wanting to tell them what to write, he knew what they had to do, what he had to do. He was on a mission to fulfill what he had the boys to write about. See, I, I'm, trying to, I'm, I'm trying to show you how we're going to narrow this thing down to what we're talking about. Yep. Now, he said he was led of the spirit into the wilderness right. to be te tested of the adversary. Right. Mm -hmm. See, I think he says tempted, but being yes. tested of the adversary, read. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, mm -hmm. he was afterward a hungered. I would be too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Read. And when the tempter came to him. Now, when the tempter came to him. He said. Did he come there dressed out, dressed in a, a harp chafer and a march suit and a, <laughs> had a diamond ring and a gold watch? And, see? Did he come to him that way? No, no, say that. No, no. No. See? He was having a vision. Mm -hmm. Looking at Satan come to him in a vision. And he's coming there to test him. Yes. That's, that's Yahweh's own son. Yes. If Yahweh's testing his own son, what do you think he's going to do with you? He's yes. going to have to be tested too. Yes. Right. Yeah, See? Right. But read on. Well, I'm sure what's happening with him. He said, if thou be the son of Yahweh. Who said this now? Satan. Satan said it. If thou be the son of Yahweh. Right. Read. Command that these stones be made bread. Command that these stones be made bread. Well, where are you at? <laughs> see, we get, we get real picky down here, see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, when you go back down here, you go back when the children of Israel came through the body water of the river Jordan, mm -hmm. told, or Joshua told them to take some, pick up 12 men, take a, pick up stones out of the bed of the river and bring it on the other side and put it on the other side as a mark. Right, right. To show where y'all came, where the Israelites came through the land, through, yeah. through, uh, through the, red, the river Jordan. Mm -hmm. But now the Satan, he's going to say, come. Command these stones be made brick. Mm -hmm. See? Why are you talking about commanding stones to be made brick for? 
when the children of Israel in the womb, they were fed man. Mm -hmm. They were 40 years, they were fed man. Mm -hmm. See? God threw the right water rich and went on the other side, the man of sea. Yes. Why? Because now they're back where the manna came from. The manna came from heaven. Mm -hmm. Canaan was a type of heaven. Right. Okay? And now, read on and see what else happened now. But he answered and said. But Joshua answered and said. It is written. Uh-oh, it's got a transcript. <laughs> he, put, he put a transcript on him. Wasn't the law and the prophets wasn't written by Moses and the prophets? So, That's right. so they had to be transcribed. The seven years they transcribed what Moses said, so they, they carried a transcript. So you read. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word. But by every word. That proceedeth out of the mouth of Yahweh. Right. Okay, read on. Read on. Then the devil taketh him up into the Then the, the devil holy taketh city. him up again. That is taking him up in the spirit. Now, now, the man's in the death. And he's at the end of 40 days. See? He's weak and all that. But he's taking him up in the, in the spirit. Where is he taking him to read? Uh, and set of him on a pinnacle of the temple. And set him upon the pinnacle, pinnacle of the temple. And saith unto him. And he said unto him. If thou be the son of Yahweh. If thou be the son of Yahweh. Cast thyself down. Cast thyself down from the temple. Read. For it is written. For even he's calling. He, he's calling <laughs> scripture. Yeah. They're, coming, they're coming out of the scriptures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See. So it means we become a little keener to find out who you're talking about. But it says it's written. So they, they, I'm talking about they got. They want to try to talk about us. See? Going to the transcript. Well, he did it. It's good over him. It's good over me. <laughs> I like transcripts. Because <laughs> well, I find out when Dr. Dr. Kenan was alive and walking around preaching the gospel, he said, the tape record is on. I wanted to be, I wanted to be, say it up loud so everybody can put it on the tape so it right. would be there for future look, use. Yeah. All right. See? So that's why I'm going to. Mm -hmm. See, that's fine then. And I find the transcript. He said that, yeah, I'm y'all in the body. We say, so are you. That's right. See? My name is not, uh, there's no salvation in my name that's in the right. Kippur County. That's right. See? That's not my name. I got a new name. See? That's right. Go to Revelation 3. And uh, well, we, we still there in the fourth chapter of Matthew. Mm -hmm. Before you before you go in for this, I'm gonna take the so we have to go back and forth. Go back in the in Matthew there. Go down there to the uh, 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 18, 18 verse, 19 verse. Okay. Uh, Matthew four eighteen. And Yahshua walking by the sea of Galilee. No, I went down too far. I got to go up a bit more. Uh, Try twelve. Okay. Now, when Joshua had heard that John was cast into prison. When, Yah when Joshua had heard that John was cast into the prison, talking about John the Baptist, read. He departed into Galilee. He departed into Galilee. Read. And leaving Nazareth, he, leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum. He came and dwelt in Capernaum. Which is upon the seacoast. Which is upon the seacoast. In the borders of Zebulun. In the borders of Zebulun. And Nephthalim. Nephthalim. Well, why are you reading that for? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm trying to find out. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find what you got. You got record here. You got somebody already said he, he's coming to fulfill. Well, why is he saying that? Why is he coming from that city? Go give me Isaiah 9 and 1. See, I'm trying to, I'm trying to show you. This man was a particular vessel. Mm -hmm. And we'll get down to it, but I'm going to go back. I've got to go back to, to show that he was a particular vessel. You've got to go back to the 10th chapter of Hebrews to read. But read on. Where are you at now? Isaiah 9 and 1. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun. He lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun. And the land of Nephthalim. In the land of Naphtali. And afterward did more grievously afflict her uh -huh. by the way of the sea. By the way of the sea. Beyond Jordan. Beyond Jordan. In Galilee of the nations. 
to eternity. He, his eyes there, 700 years before the Messiah was born, telling him where the Messiah would come out of the city. Of. Born into Capri. That's pretty, that's pretty good. Yeah, it is. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't do that about you. No. He didn't tell you, he didn't tell you where you're going to be at tonight. <laughs> no. See, but I'm trying to show the scriptures are very pinpoint about how, how to identify this man we're talking about as being the Savior. Mm -hmm. And it should be our, to, to our advantage to, to understand and appreciate that. See? I'm trying to show you, this is the one now. See? Now, you go back to Hebrews again, pardon me, please. The tenth chapter of Hebrews. Go back up to the third verse. I like it out of the King James Version if you have it. You don't have it, just read it. I have it. Yeah. Hebrews ten three. Uh huh. But in those sacrifices. Now here's a, here's Paul writing to the Hebrews. The Hebrews had knowledge of what Yahweh had given the Israel back here under that law back here. Yeah. So he said, "What to read?" But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. Now think about this, folks. Every day, there was a daily administration. Mm -hmm. They had to kill the lambs in the morning, in the evening. They had to kill boys for sin offerings, hell, and all kinds of offerings all day long. It was all kinds of offerings for sin. Mm -hmm. Where did they take the sacrifice to? They took it to the priest at the altar where they had to kill the lamb or the bull, whatever had to be done, and they had to be burned on, burned on the altar. Mm -hmm. So this tabernacle is becoming a figure of the Messiah because the tabernacle is taking away their sin. Mm -hmm. In type. Mm -hmm. See? Now, if we follow what I'm saying about this, it's going to take away their sin. See? Now, read on and see what else he said there. For it is not possible. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls that the blood of bull and of goats and of goats should take away sins. So now all the sacrifices you read about back there in, in Exodus and Leviticus and all back there, all the sacrifices they could not take away sin. That was only a type, and that's only a shadow. Mm -hmm. See, read. Wherefore? When Wherefore? When he cometh into the world. When this one comes into the world, now I'm trying to show what, how peculiar this one was. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he, he say, saith. He saith, sacrifice sacrifices and, and offerings. And offerings. Thou wouldest not. Thou wouldest not. But a body has but, thou prepared me. But what? But a body. But a body has thou prepared me. So that was a special prepared body that Yahweh has prepared. It was not, see, something like you and me. We didn't qualify. Mm -hmm. See? But this one was a special fair body. <coughs> Why? Because this one back here was a type of special fair body. We already gave special instruction how to build this <coughs> tabernacle to take away the sins in type. Then there had to be a special fair body back here to take away sins down here. Now, I see, I'm trying to show you now, we don't have nobody before, he, before this time that qualified to be the Savior, but this one here. Because all we're saying is that Yahweh chose. See? And Dr. Kenny River, you can label that point out. See? Look, we got it right here. Yahweh is pure spirit. See? This Yahweh took on shape and form as Yahweh of him. See? Then Yahweh was manifested in Yahshua's side. See? Now, he said, now salvation is not in Yahweh. It's not in Elohim, right. but it's only in Yahshua's side because that was a special fair body. Mm -hmm. They had the blood mm -hmm. to atone for sin. Mm -hmm. There's no blood in this one, no blood in that one. Mm -hmm. right. No blood in this one. Here. So we narrowed it down. There's got to be this special fair body that's got to come in on time based upon this. I don't have time to get any prophecy to you. You got to come in on time, being born there in the, at the time they built the Herodian temple. Mm -hmm. So that he's got to come in on time. And when he comes in and he fulfills that, see, that's the man that you got to you got to you got you got to preach the gospel about. Yeah. Right. See. Right. Have you left Matthew? Uh, Matthew the fourth chapter yet? I'm still there. I'm still there. Can you go down to the twenty-fourth verse? I believe it is. 
Okay, Matthew four twenty four, <coughs> and his fame went throughout all Syria. Well, go one verse right above there, twenty three. And Yahshua went about all Galilee. Yahshua went about all Galilee. He went about all Galilee, preaching. Teaching in their synagogues. Teaching in their synagogues. And preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Preaching what the gospel of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So he started preaching the gospel of the kingdom when he came out of out of, out of the uh, the desert. I'm talking about preaching the gospel now. Mm -hmm. See, now I'm, I'm talking about uh, preaching the gospel now. Mm -hmm. How important it is to preach the gospel? Mm -hmm. Because I think we, we we've lost sight on these things, folks. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about in this school we call IDMR. That's mm -hmm. right. We've lost sight on that. Mm -hmm. The gospel of the king. See, now to know the gospel of the king. See, I, I got to go with it. We don't read that. But Dr. Kenny made us a theme song for us. Matthew 24, 14, 15. Mm -hmm. See, I'm, I'm trying to de determine, trying to make plain that there's only but one name for salvation, and it can't be nobody but one person. That's right. One vessel that Yahweh has chose to use. And that one was a special pair. Yeah. Look, folks, when they accused him, went there and heard him there. He said he examined him. He didn't find any fault with him. Right. See, so I'm not, now, there's no fault in him. Then, well, you, well why you, that's why it makes him a perfect sacrifice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because back here, he told him, take out the man without spot and bring it back here and tight. Right. They're going to pour it down to this one down here. Yeah. See, and it's, it's got to tie in that way. So now he starts off his ministry talking about the kingdom of Yahweh is at hand. Mm. Yeah. See, he's going around in the, uh, so now here we have him preaching the kingdom of Yahweh. He told the disciples, see, Matthew again, 24, Matthew 28, 19 and 20. This is something we, we've heard. We've heard. Sometimes we haven't heard for a long time. We heard about it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to make a make the point right. that you cannot use anybody's name but one, right. unless you are Messiah. Yeah, right. Because the book is stacked against you if you try to use anybody else. Right. Mm -hmm. They don't qualify. Right. I mean, they gotta qualify. Because true, when you when you actually you showing the scripture testifying the Messiah, you're prophesying. Because mm -hmm. you're showing a proper prophesy that came to pass. Mm -hmm. Prophesy that came to pass. See, you had Isaiah, he said a virgin should be seen and burned for the thing. Somewhere along that's gotta happen. Yeah. See? Yeah. And Isaiah, he, he he would be out of place if he if he was the only one that, that said anything about that. Right. See? You already had to show it to Moses back here when he showed him when he made the man uh, a vessel of Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. He had to reach the bowels of Mother Earth. No sin had been committed on her. She was a virgin. Yeah. You had to bring that man up out of that so we can see. Isaiah's got to say the same thing. So the law and the prophets testified of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So if you go back and see the law and the prophets testifying of the Messiah, that's more, that makes it more and more for you to be able to know that this one here was the Savior. And that means you, that, if, you, if you really understand it, so you won't, you won't be able to buy anything else. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to accept anything else. Mm -hmm. See, because your evidence is too good. As it is. Now, what has happened, real plainly in IDMR, this man that we call Henry Clifford Kennedy, that was Yahweh in the body. And what's happened is we don't we didn't want to listen to what we always had to say to us. We got to come up with something new, and therefore we departed from what he taught. Mm -hmm. See, we can't do that now because if you recognize what was in him, that's when that's causing you why you should listen to him. Mm -hmm. See, because that's y'all went by and here look. Oh, I, I gotta get in that way. I gotta get gotta get down to that too. Because see. This Savior, he's got to come the way it was written of him so you can see that he is the one beyond shadow of doubt right. 
And once you're convinced of that, you should not let that slip. Right. That's going to be your, your rock. Mm -hmm. See? And I think you're right there in Revelation, talking about Revelation 3, 17, 2, 2, 2 17, 3, 13. Mm -hmm. Revelation 3, 13, it says you had a, a, a rock with a new name in it. Right. Yep. See? And now all, we, all I'm trying to get to you to see is that this man had to come a certain way. And how important that one was. And if you understand what, he, what he's doing, you'll be able to see why I, had, I put the emphasis on this man. See? Now, the spirit that was in H.C. Kim, right. that's why he said salvation is not in his name. That's, right. that's why he said that's not his name. Right. Because that was in him, that is the name of salvation. Right. See? Well, if that's true, then he should have taught his disciples the same thing. Give me Matthew 10 and 20. You start, you start 18 and 19 up above that. This is Messiah talking to his disciples and we charge them to go out and preach the gospel. What did you tell them to do when you go preach the gospel? Matthew 10 and, and 20. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start at 19. But when they deliver you up. But when the Messiah is telling the disciples that when they deliver you up, he said, he said, they're going to deliver you up. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. That might happen Sunday. <laughs> See? Re re read on. Take no thought how or what you shall speak. Take no thought of what, what you're going to speak. Read. For it shall be given you in, For it's that, going to be, same in that same hour. It's going to be given you that same hour. What you shall speak. What you shall speak. For it is not you that oh. speak. Oh. It's not you that speak it. Nope. But, but the spirit of your father. But the spirit of your show. father mm -hmm. that speaketh through you. Yep. See? Well, see, when the Messiah, he come along, he said, I can't do nothing. I can't do nothing myself. Yeah. The father in me, he do it the works. I bet you on the same page he is. That's what Dr. King said. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. He said, I, I, can't, I can't tell you anything unless you, I get permission to say it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then you can put permission to say it. See? Did you ever think about this? See? Messiah walks around doing the trial down in Julian Hill for three and a half years. <clears throat> See? You read over there in Acts, the third chapter, there was a man in that was lame from his mother's womb. Mm -hmm. yeah. Forty years. Yeah. Messiah evidently passed by him sometimes. Didn't do it. He's being preserved mm -hmm. for a protected time. Right. Mm -hmm. To show the power of Yahweh through the disciples. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See? And when that man asked for arms, yeah. said, Peter and John walked into the temple, saw this man asked for arms. He said, Silver and gold have an arm. Yeah, that's right. That was not good news to him. No. Right, right. That's right. That's right. See? But he said, But, that's a conjunction. In the name of Yahshua, I take my bed and walk. Well, get up and walk. Yeah. See? And the man got strength and got up and walked. Went rejoicing into the temple. Yep. Then Peter and John got in trouble. Yep. See? Yep. See, well, what authority did you have you to do this here kind of miracle? Uh -huh. Right, right. See? They begin to start to pray. When that happened, they begin to start praising them. Huh? No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. They thought about that they did it by one of their gods. See? No matter what's going to happen now, they put him on the carpet. I thought it was Peter and John. Yeah. Yeah. See? And when they got him on the carpet, this is the fourth chapter of, of uh, Acts of Apostles. And they give him time to speak. Now watch how, watch how, how Luke wrote, writes this up. See? Four and seven. Acts four and seven. And when they had set them in the midst. When they had set Peter and John in the midst. They asked, by what power, by what name 
have you done this? Now the leaders of Israel are asking by what power, by what name have you done this? So they're associating power with the name. Mm -hmm. Read. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit. Then Peter what? Filled with the Holy Spirit. No, this, this is Peter by himself. No. no. 53 days ago he wasn't saying this. No. That's true. He was denying the Messiah. Right. But now he's up boldly in the front of the temple and he says, they ask him, by what name or by what authority do you do this? And what did he say? You rulers of the people. And the elders of Israel. And the elders of Israel. If we this day be examined. You got a different tone now. Mm -hmm. See? Okay. Rulers of Israel. Be it known as you this day. Read. If we this day be examined. If we this day be examined. Of the good deed done to the impotent man. Of the good deeds done to the impotent man. By what means. By what means this man is made whole. Now they're trying to examine what means this may hold. They're asking for what name and by what power was it done. Mm -hmm. right. Peter's speaking there by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. right. So this is not Peter talking. That's right. That's right. This is the Holy Spirit speaking. Right. That's what I'm saying. That's what was in Dr. Kim. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit's got a name. Yeah. And why not we just use that name? Right. Yeah, exactly. right. See? It eliminate a lot of fuss and problems in here. Yeah, and you got a book to back it up. See, read up. Be it known unto all of you. Be it known unto all of you. And to all the people of Israel. And to all the people of Israel. He's proclaiming that all he wants the whole he wants to publish it the whole thing. Yep. Did you ever think Dr. King asked us to do the same thing? Mm -hmm. Publish this gospel of the kingdom. To the, to the world. Yeah. See? Now we won't tell anybody who we ain't gonna tell them. We ain't gonna teach we don't try to stop. Teach for them, for them to understand that we just going to preach like we preach to everybody else. Mm -hmm. That's not showing love, folks. No, it's not. See? We're talking about this Yahweh. We're talking about he so loved the world that he gave his only the God said that whosoever believes him should not perish. Mm -hmm. right. But we got to preach him so that he can be able to believe that. Right. Yeah. See, read. That by the name of Yahshua. That by the name, but by the name of Yahshua. Read. The Messiah of Nazareth. The Messiah of Nazareth. So he's identifying where he's coming from. The Messiah of Nazareth. Read. Whom you crucified. Now he's identifying the one that you crucified. Whom Yahweh raised from the dead. And he could have put some other statements in there too. And whom I denied. Even see? by him does this man stand here before you whole. Oh, see. But he's standing here before you whole. See. So the, the power was in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And there's no, I'm trying to show there's no other name for us to even to, even to look at or to examine but the name of Yahshua Messiah. Right. That's right. Buy that and, and, and embrace it and hang on to it. Right. Read on and see what else he said. This is the stone. This is the stone of what? That was set at naught. Which was set at naught. Okay. In other words, he was the stone that came in the world. They examined him and they missed him. They rejected him. Yep. Yep. See, read. Which has become the head of Which one? Yahshua took that one you rejected, Yahshua's side, see, and made him the chief cornerstone of the building of Yahshua. Of Yahshua. Mm -hmm. See? Messiah said, Upon this rock I build my very church, and the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Mm -hmm. He was not talking about people. Mm -hmm. right. He was talking about Yahshua's side. He's the rock. That's, right. yep. That's the one. See, some minister try to trap me, try to get on me about it. Can Yahweh make a rock too big that he can't, have, can't move? Yeah. See, yes, he can. He did that. That's Yahshua's side. Yeah. <laughs> He's big. He can't move. He can't be moved. Mm -hmm. See, I believe in him. Yeah. And I should not be moved mm -hmm. because he is the rock. Mm -hmm. See? And look, and the, and, the, and the gospel is about him. Yeah. See? Now, I'm telling you about how important it is now. I'm talking about the gospel now. Did you finish up there? There's one more. Oh, good. good. Get, get to one more. Neither is there salvation. Neither is there salvation. In any other. In any other. For there is. Wait, wait that, that, that's, that, that's what the stem of that. I think that was even mentioned in the aim. Right. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. How, yes, come, it is. We, how come we're trying to make it be something else? I know. That don't make sense to me. 
There's no other name given under heaven or on earth whereby a man can be saved. Yeah, that's true. So we've got to preach the name of Yahshua Messiah. Right. The gospel's got to be about Yahshua Messiah. Right. Yes. Well, why is that so important? See? Second Thessalonians 1, 7, 1, 5, 6, 7. And to you who are troubled. Now he says, to you who are troubled. Some of us came in here, we didn't know we were in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. But when you find out you was in trouble, you find out how bad you are, you, you, you need help real bad. Mm -hmm. See? But to you who are troubled, he said, rest with us. Well, what happened to you? You found the Messiah, now you're at rest. Mm -hmm. So I mean, now we can help you. That's why this is the first name is Luke. Help you find and know Yahweh. That means we should have found him to be able to help you find and know him. Mm -hmm. That's the way I read it. Mm -hmm. See? You don't need no new interpretation on it either. Right. See? Look, folks, Dr. Kenny came and told us the truth. Yeah. And the truth does not lie. That's right. So don't come telling me that he lied to us. That's right. Or that he deceived us. Mm -hmm. Or that he was deceptive trying to get us to buy something new. That won't work. No. Because he is true. Yahshua said, I'm the, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Right. No man comes to the Father but by me. Right. So if, you don't, if you're not able to buy the Messiah, you're not able to, able to get to the Father. Right. See? Let's find about this gospel. Now read on before he says over here. And to you who are troubled. To you who that are troubled. Rest with us. Rest with us. Why? Because we found rest. How do we find rest? By being born again. Mm -hmm. How were you born again? By the blood, water, spirit, forth. The death, the burial, and the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Because that's the gospel. Right. That's the gospel. Now, let's see what he says. Now, read on. When Yahshua the Messiah. When Yahshua the Messiah. Shall be revealed from heaven. Shall be revealed from heaven. Now, caution about this now. Hopefully, he's been revealed already. But if, he, if it's not revealed, when he is revealed from heaven, what's going to happen? With his mighty angels. With his mighty angels. In flaming fire. He's coming in. Wait, wait a minute. There's the way I heard it. He's going to come down in the cloud. Mm. <laughs> come down in the cloud. See? Well, he's going to come out the cloud. Well, Greg, come out, come on, come on. <laughs> but what you mean? I don't want him to come out flaming fire. I don't want a flaming fire coming. Read. In flaming fire. In flaming fire. Taking vengeance, taking on, vengeance on them that know not Yahweh. Taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh. Now, you can't know Yahweh without knowing the Son. Right. The Son, he's the only one who's able to declare. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See? Read. And that obey not the gospel and of our Savior. they obey not the gospel of the Savior. Now, the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. See? And I'm saying that that was what was pronounced out of this man here, Dr. Henry Kipkin, to us that we didn't know before it came to pass, go to the law and to the prophecy. And then you said, we don't need that no more. You just got rid of your mom and dad. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is your witnesses. Right. Mm -hmm. See? You got rid of your mom and dad. That's the law and the prophet. Right. See? Dr. King told you the law and the prophet is, is a mother and a father. Mm -hmm. See? So, I mean, we got to accept it. Mm -hmm. And anybody tell you to take them, to not, to not, this, this, uh, as I would look at, Mark and keep on going. Mm -hmm. Just they, they don't know. Now, you're going to try to help them to find out. You want to do that so they won't be lost. They won't be, be caught in the flames of the yard. See? Take a flame of vision name that no not your hour. See? Now you you uh so, so, so now uh uh give me first Peter No, I think it's second Peter one eighteen. This, this gospel is something else, folks, if we, if we use it correctly. 
the founder came to us. When we, when we came, when I came, I'm going to take it around me. When I came to school, I didn't know nothing about law and prophets. <laughs> I saw, I heard something about Old Testament, New Testament. I didn't know what that really meant. See, then he, this man came to us and said that man, the Yahweh sent men to have vision and revelation. Well, see, that would have nailed down my search a long time ago if I knew that. Because the man said he didn't have a vision and have a revelation, I knew he's not, he was not qualified. Mm -hmm. But now if he said he had a vision and revelation, then he's got to be able to have some proof with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm trying to say. That's, how, that's what distinguishes this man from the rest of them out there in the world is because he presented witnesses to prove it. And it was through the scripture. See? And look, folks, I, mean, I tried to show this real quickly that this same Yahshua, see, he had a script. He went to the script. Yes. The law and the prophets, because they testified. You had uh, the prophets, you had when he walked around. He said, as it is written. So he's already talking about something that's already been written. He's testifying to him. Yeah. And we're talking about something that's already been written. All we, all we got is Dr. King's word on paper. And you, you, you got, if you got the hard, if you got a cassette tape of it, you got it on a tape where you hear it actually voice say anything. And there's nothing wrong with either one of them. And you're not going to convince me not to use them. <laughs> because I found in it was able to deliver a man's soul from death unto life. That is, if you receive it, if you accept it. Now, if you don't want to accept it, that's, that's, that's what the lake of fire is for. That's right. Yeah. See? And uh, if I recall correctly, he made it big enough for all to go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, you know about that being in your seat? And look, it won't be in the same room only. It's big enough to take everybody's got to go. Mm -hmm. See? And this Yahweh has a power to deliver a soul from death and life. We, we are souls, folks. When the Messiah came in the world, what did he ask? The, the scribes and scribe, the Pharisees, see? The Messiah said, I come to save, come in to save the, uh, the, the uh, them that are lost. Right. See? And the Pharisees and scribes said, well, leave them alone. He's OK. They, they, go there, they were not lost. Well, if they forgot to do something, they forgot to read the scripture. We said, all oh, his sin and come short of the glory of yeah. yeah. That got you, buddy. Mm -hmm. See, it got me. Everybody. Now, we found out we were lost. Then we had to find somebody to help lead us out, out of this situation we were lost in. Right. So what happened, this founder of this school, IDMR, he came and gave us tools that we can use to verify and to check out whether a man knows what he's talking about or not. Right. But you got to use them correctly and properly. See? Give a man a, uh, give a man a, a, a hammer and a nail. There's some know how to use it, some don't know how to use it. Mm -hmm. See, those are tools, but if you know how to use it, don't mean, don't mean nothing to you. So you might come up, you might come with more blue fingers than anything else. <laughs> See, because so you know how to use it. But the thing I'm trying to tell here's here's what. When he came to us and told us. These, these, these are things I keep, hard, keep dear to me. When he showed me in the scripture that Yahweh chose to show men in vision and revelation about himself. Mm -hmm. I had no other men to tell me anything about that. Mm -mm. He said a man had had a vision. See? Then he went in the book and proved it. Abraham back there. Yeah. See, the word, the word of Yahweh came to Abraham in a vision. vision. That's right. See, so he had a vision. Mm -hmm. Then Moses, he had a vision. Mm -hmm. I, said, oh, I don't see that in the Bible. What is that in the Bible? He had a vision. When the Messiah came, he chose Peter, James, and John, took him up in the mount to fulfill Moses taking Aaron and the body up in the mount. See, and then when he comes down from the mount, he says, tell the vision no man. Right. This here, that means that had to be a vision back here too. Right. See, that's the way God is that's check and balance. That's the way you be able to verify. Right. See? And those kind of things is what causes us to be able to know that. Mm -hmm. See? Then he said, go to the law of the prophets. Mm -hmm. See? 
Well, I didn't know what the law and the prophets were. Right. So you had to teach me what the law and the prophets were, right. the writing of Moses and the prophets. Right. Mm -hmm. and they were the ones testifying the Messiah. That was a hit. That's the, that's the mother and father of Yahshua Messiah. They were the ones to be able to identify when he was born, when he was supposed to be here, when he was supposed to be born, what he was going to do. They were, they were witnesses to him. So don't, don't, don't take them away. Right. See? So if you, if you start examining it real closely, you'll find that this Yahshua Messiah, he is the star of the show. <laughs> yes, he and is. let his name be known. Right. Give me out uh, Ezekiel 24, 26, 36. Mm -hmm. 36, uh, 24. Ezekiel 36, uh, 20. Ezekiel 36, 20. Mm -hmm. And when they entered into, I'm sorry, and when they entered unto the heathen. When they Israel entered unto the heathen. Whither they went. Wherever they went. I'm talking about Israel going into the heathens when they were disobedient. They were sent unto the heathens. Read. They profaned my holy they name. They profaned his holy name. Read. When they said to them. When they said to them. These are the people of Yahweh. These are the people of Yahweh. And are gone forth out of his land. And they're gone forth out of his land. But I had pity for my holy name. But Yahweh said, I had pity for my name. Read on. Which the house of Israel had profaned. Which the house of Israel had profaned. I'm, I'm trying to look, folks. There's nothing new today happening that hasn't happened already. That's right. See? Come with the time you use somebody else's name instead of the Savior's name. You're profaning the name. You're, you are denying the name. Right. Read on what it says here. Which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, mm -hmm. whither they sent, where, whither they went. Where they went, read. Therefore, say. So when they went into Canaan and they start worshiping idols, they start building. Uh, uh, they built two rolling calves over here. They did all kinds of things over here. See, and that and they and they want to say we are. I mean, doing all these corrupt things, and they say we are the children of Yahweh. That's profaning His name. That's, you're not do, you're not being obedient to my commandments. Read. Therefore say unto the house of Israel. Therefore say unto the house of Israel. Thus saith Yahweh Elohim. Thus saith Yahweh Elohim. I do not this for your sake. I'm not going to do this for your sake. O house of Israel. O house of Israel. But for mine holy name's sake. But for my holy name's sake. He's going to buy his holy name. Right. See? Read. Which ye have profaned among the heathen. Which you have profaned upon the heathen. See, when Dr. Cameron wanted us to walk up right before and, understand, and preach this gospel, see, and, and deliver it as it was given to us, say, if you do that and then walk up right before me, say, all kinds of miracles will work among you. Mm -hmm. See, but you profane his name and, and make it none void, and he's not going to do anything to it. See, you all expect to have the problems and trouble that you have because you're not, not honoring his name. Mm -hmm. See? He told him, uh, Back in the 10th chapter of Matthew, told the disciples there, he said, look, if you deny me before man, yeah. I'm going to deny you before my father. That's right. right. That's right. See? So if I say, put anybody's name in place of the Yahshua Messiah, mm -hmm. see, then I'm profaning the name. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to see, I don't want to see this. Mm -hmm. no. I don't want to see the rap of the Yahweh go to the lake of fire. Because the, the, the uh, look, folks, eternal damnation, that's just as long as eternal life. And, and they don't have transfers. <laughs> that's a permanent position. Mm -hmm. So we want, to be the, we, want, we want to seek after Yahweh and, seek, and accept him and then stand on him. When we got that, we got that. We got the, we got the whole thing in. See, and, and, and you go through the book, you find all kinds of evidence to prove that there's only but one that you can give praise and glory to that will give witness to Yahshua Shai and the Savior. Uh, give witness to Yahshua Shai and the Father Yahweh. Mm -hmm. See, I come in the name of Yahweh through His Son Yahshua Shai, mm -hmm. hoping to trust that Yahweh will give you the insight to know. See, what has happened to us is that this Yahweh has shown us that we had to go through, take this path. 
It's, we got to come up out of darkness, come into this here world, accept the blood of the Messiah. So you got to be baptized or buried with the Messiah in, in death. Then receive the holy anointing oil. That sits us at the door. When you step through the door, you enter the holy place. And then when you get in the holy place, you should be illuminated. Your understanding should be illuminated. See, that, that gives you, that means you've been blessed. See, and after that's happened to you, then you should be taken the, of the fruit of the bread of life, which is your, again Yahshua's side. See, then he becomes our only intercessor. See, you, so when you get to looking at this real closely, then you see, if you step your side, you're complete in him. You got everything. Well, if you just get him, you got everything. Yeah. And there's nothing for you to do. Yeah. But you got to accept him. Mm -hmm. And if you accept him, you have eternal life. Yeah. Hold from scratch, you got something. I hope it's safe. Thank you. Is that on time there? Yeah, we're just four hours. You're good. Let's all rise and be dismissed with the doxology. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Hallelujah. Did you see what I replied to you on there on Facebook? Andrea, don't forget to put your...